Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great and as always for anyone new to the channel my name is Lee also known as Osiris. In today's episode we're going to continue on with our Pokemon VGC Series 10 content and play a team that's on your screen right in front of you now which is Eternatus. So Eternatus is a Pokemon that I haven't really featured too much on the channel before um, but I'm looking forward to diving in with it today. It's got a really unique typing, obviously that dragon and poison typing as well. So really high base speed, decent special attack and has some good defensive bulk about it as well. It can be kind of even further extended with something like cosmic power, which we're actually playing on this build today. Obviously though, the rest of the team's made up. We've got a nice fire water grass core in there as well. No incineral, uh, but we do have intimidate on the landerus. And I know a lot of you have been kind of crying out recently for teams uh, where we're not featuring so much Rillaboom and incineral. And I am gonna be doing that. Uh, obviously it's hard to not incorporate some of these Pokemon sometimes because they're such underpins of the format at the minute. And that's why you see them on so many teams they kind of pull a lot of kind of builds together and that's why they're so successful but in line with what you would like to see we will be kind of innovating and and playing a few different uh, calls going forward especially into this week and next week and keep the suggestions coming we've had some great suggestions about for uh, teams that you'd like to see featured and particular some restricted pokemon as well but i feel like we're touching on eternatus today it's kind of one of those fringe pokemon that's doing kind of good but it's not doing amazingly well but i feel like it could become uh one of the top kind of restricted options that that players do jump on but um it's an interesting pokemon hope if you do try the team out as always i mentioned the uh, poker piss is down in the description we'll throw the rental team up at the end of the episode that you do enjoy the team if you do try it and if you've been playing around with eternatus already uh do let me know down in the comment section uh what your what your opinions are on on it are because i love to hear and uh, always interested to hear what what other players perspectives are on some of these uh lesser used restricteds but without further ado friends hope like I say, you enjoyed today's episode and we'll jump into our first match of the day. First up today, we have a treat. We've got <laughs> an Evolutions theme. I can't believe this. Okay, so we've got Jolteon, Flareon, Espeon, Umbreon, Glaceon and Sylveon. There's always, you know, this is like throwback to back in the day on the rank ladder where you'd always get one Japanese player who would be piloting just a full EV team. And uh, it's kind of nice to see again. Um... How are we going to approach this? I feel Eternatus does pretty well against the majority of stuff here. There's not really a ground type to give us any real issues. Obviously, the Espion gives us a few problems, so we need to, to deal with that. Um, but outside of that, I think Eternatus has a, a really nice time against this team. Um, okay. Do we lead Eternatus or do we kind of just deal with the Espion and then Eternatus kind of has that win con, right? Um we could get a cosmic power pretty quickly though with with fake out and then just cosmic power and then just kind of go to town on everything i think entai is pretty useful here do we want some speed control uh regieleki always going to be good but i feel like stability of suicune can kind of come in and fire water grass core against something like an an sp uh, an all evolution build is is good um i kind of want these these episodes to kind of be more against uh, common archetypes i always like to kind of play things that are like relevant in the format at the minute but you do sometimes just look at the draw uh, obviously bump into some some archetypes that aren't as um as common as others and sometimes it's kind of fun to go up against these sort of teams as well you know so we've got the sylvian and we've got the espion i wonder if there's like a round um sort of uh theme going on with the team because we can nuke the sylvian here but like i say i think the best thing overall is probably try and get like that cosmic power up as soon as we can here just go for the fake out into something like uh espion shut it down quick get the cosmic power up and once we've got one up i think we're going to be in a, a pretty decent spot so see the sylvian retreat here umbrian going to make its way onto the field we do have to worry about something like yawn from the opposing umbrian because uh, that can be a little bit annoying to get around especially if it yawns us this next turn um and we're not really able to uh to get the full kind of use out of eternatus while we're sleeping right do we just go after the espion uh or do we kind of concentrate down on the ember it's going to be an end game of umbrian i think so we'll sludge bomb and we'll grassy glide into the espion get rid of that big threat and then and then we can just work around everything it's beside the Umbrian. Wow, Espion's so weak. Poor Espion. I love Espion. Don't get me wrong, but... 
Okay, the sludge bomb. Do nice work, and there's the yawn. We we knew it was coming. We knew it was coming. We knew it. I knew it. We could double up into the Umbra in the next turn. I guess it's unlikely that the Umbrian has protect, but it's always these kind of you know like in a common set, Umbrian never really has room for protect. But it's always these kind of builds that you see. Ah, that is a protect. But I would say it's more likely that the Sylvian protect here gets away from the potential uh, sludge bomb that's that's really kind of looking like it would go into that slot so uh okay we get the battle cancel which is which is excellent excellent news for for me for you guys because we don't really want to see that we want to see some more meta teams anyway good game to my opponent we'll jump straight into our next uh match of today's episode okay next up today we have a reggie alecki togekiss ferrothorn sableye entai and kyoga so an interesting kind of kyoga build not kind of common Kyogre build that you've seen with like Tornadus but you do have another Prankster user here in Sableye. It's got Fake Out, got Quash, um, big things to kind of note here. Obviously Taunt as well to kind of shut down our speed control. Got Redirection with that Togekiss which is going to be another kind of layer to protecting the Kyogre especially from something like Rillaboom where the Togekiss has a really kind of good matchup against us. Uh, Entai as well gives us a few issues. I think probably here we want something like Reggie Alecki, uh, Rillaboom, Eternatus. I like Eternatus is good here, kind of really doesn't care too much about what's on my opponent's team. I mean, the only ground type attack that potentially could come out here would be from something like uh, Entai, Bulldoze, uh, Stomp and Tantrum maybe, but I very much doubt it. Uh, I think we want Rillaboom for the Augur and then maybe our own Entai as well, you know. Um, because it gives us that double kind of lair against something like Ferrothorn. Um, and with the Dragon type and on, on Eternatus, we don't worry so much about Kyogre. Especially if we get like one Cosmic Power Up, we're kind of, we're kind of good to go. Eternatus gives us cover against the Togekiss as well, which is nice. Uh, and we got the Flamethrower, which helps us against Ferrothorn, which could be a little bit tricky otherwise. So, let's see what my opponent brings. Okay, Togekiss, Sableye. What are we going to see here? Well, we led pretty well here. I think the thing that we need to be like a little bit mindful of is like that the Sableye does carry Fake Out. And it it could potentially Fake Out uh, Turnitus here. It could stop us going for something like um, a Cosmic Power with Taunt. So it's got a lot of ways where it could shut us down. I think we... Do we just Volt Switch out onto the Togekiss and just get a Cosmic Power while we can, I think, because then it kind of gives us that stability going forward in the match. Fake Out coming out into the Regieleki, which is fine because, yep, that's that's all right. Get the Cosmic Power off, which is great. And that'll just weaken the uh, the Dazzling Gleams that are potentially coming out from this, this Togekiss here. Oh, throwing out the Yawn already. Okay, well, that's not ideal for us. Uh, but we can we can manage with it. I think we get another cosmic power up rather than attacking here because um, Yeah, it's gonna give us just a little bit more longevity when we do eventually go to sleep and you've got powerhouses that could come in like Kyogre and we want to be able to just kind of soak those attacks up a little bit better than when previously. Okay, we're seeing a protect here unless we get taunted. No taunt coming out. We're going to see what we're going to see. Foul play. What's this Sableye doing? We get another cosmic power off, which is good. Foul play. Yeah, into Eternatus. But, yep. I mean, it's just it's just tickling, tickling us right now. And we will go to sleep. But, I mean, we kind of set ourselves up well to kind of uh, deal with this sleep. Like I said, I think now... <sighs> Did we see the Quash come out? Potentially. I'm just going to Sludge Bomb and Vault Switch into the Togekiss slot. Be interesting to see if it's got Dazzling Gleam or Air Slash or if it's got both of those. You know, I wouldn't have thought so because you think like it's probably got Yawn, Protect, Follow Me and either Dazzling Gleam or, or, uh, or Air Slash. Makes sense to have the Air Slash. There's the Ally Switch coming out. I mean, I don't really mind this too much. We'll get... Some nice damage onto the Sableye, which is always going to be something that we want to try and get rid of anyway. Um, and I think probably want to get we want to get. Uh, I don't want to get Rillaboom in just yet. I think it's a good way for us to deal with the Kyogre in a late game. So Entai makes a lot of sense here. Going to be able to come in and disrupt with things like um, 
snarl if we need to and uh, yeah if it is a dozen gleam I mean we take that I mean that's just ridiculous two cosmic powers nothing's taken this Eternatus down it's ridiculous um all right well we go for a sacred fire into the Sableye and then we'll just sludge bomb into into the Togekiss it's likely that the Togekiss well I mean it's pretty hard my opponent's got like quite a passive like combination out on the field at the minute you know you can see the damage that they they're going to be able to do with something like dazzling gleam it's not really going to be kind of cutting the mustard here uh so they really want to probably adjust their board position i think even a sacred fire in the rain will take down that stabilize so if kyoga does come in here i think we're we're not in a, a terrible spot anyway and if we get the wake up with with eternatus that's a bonus we get the the sludge bomb into the kyoga so that damage will be really useful <sighs> okay Sable I just yeah got nothing better to do but but go for those ally switches I guess at the minute sacred fire the burn here would be nice if we can get it um, but Eternatus is like on the on the the ticker it's gonna wake up at some point we don't really want to sacrifice uh, anti just yet so I'm gonna go for sludge bomb into Kaoga and just switch into the boom because then we got Grassy Glide, we can go after the Sableye, just get rid of that, because it's a bit annoying that it's just sitting on the field. We know it's got stuff like Foul Play, um, Fake Out. I don't know what else it's got. Do we? Do we? Ally Switch, of course, yeah. That's the, the only button it's been clicking, so. Let's see. Let's see what happens here. But we're probably going to take a water spout, I would imagine. Maybe... Is it got quashed, do you reckon? Maybe? I don't know. Sableye is such a hard Pokemon to play against because it is a, a um, especially in a, a best of one, it is just a, a, you know, you're just guessing a lot of the time. And the Togo Kiss comes back in. Okay, well, that's alright. We take three turns of sleep. Oh, the Blizzard. Nice play from my opponent. Scouting out the Rillaboom coming back onto the field. Uh, yeah, really nice, really nice play, but Eternity is taking that pretty well. We do have the active fake out this next turn, so that kind of helps us out a bunch. Um, I think what we'll do is fake out into... Um, I mean, the Dazzle Gleam's a bit annoying, but I mean, the Togekiss probably protects here. Fake out the Kyogre, we don't really want to have to contend with another Blizzard, especially on Rilla, even though that we've got, like, Regieleki in the back. I think Eternatus wakes up here. We get the Sludge Bomb. Yeah, they're going to go follow me anyway. Okay, well, that's all right. I mean, Rillaboom dodges a bit of damage. Yeah, we got the wake up. So two Sludge Bombs should get the... Yeah, we'll, and we'll get the... Yeah, so this is... this. And we kind of want the Grassy Train to, to go away here because we want to be able to get the Togekiss and then the Grassy Glide into the Kyogre the next turn. But I guess we can just protect Rillaboom here. Um, and then and then just get rid of the Togekiss because they have to follow me I think to protect protect the, the Kyogre here from the, the Grassy Glide I think it makes the most sense and then once we've removed that sleep threat we're kind of alright but just Cosmic Power is just a ridiculous move just such a ridiculous move so we'll protect we'll see the follow me I think yeah and the ogre probably goes for another blizzard. And it's got the chance to miss, you know? So. Get rid of that threat. And we've got to contend with um, fake up from the save light coming in the next turn. Another blizzard coming out. But these blizzards are going to run out of PP. Because, you know, unless they're max. Does hit, though. Are you kidding? Are you actually kidding? Are you 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 kidding? Um, <laughs> it was going to happen, wasn't it? Inevitable. Uh, all right. Well, the freeze comes out. It's always a bit harder to take, you know, when the blizzard's uh, not got its 100% accuracy. What is it, like 70% out of hail? Oh, I need to get the freeze as well. Okay. Well, oh, Entai comes in. That's interesting. Huh. Are they going to... They're not going to allow us. They're not going to allow us to go for Grassy Glide here, surely. I mean, we don't. I'm going to just click the Grassy Glide button uh, and Sludge Bomb. 
sludge bomb into the end time. Pro probably see the Kyogre protect here, walking into this, and a sacred fire. But sacred fire can miss as well. It's not 100% accurate. Do we f do we thaw? No. It's where we need to get our end tie onto the field, and uh, sacred fire. Yeah, they take us down. But I mean, it opens the door for Regieleki to come in. Um. And then I think we're going to have to end the game by sacred firing our own. Uh, or did we get, no, I think what we could potentially do now is get Entai in, sacred fire our Eternatus just to thaw ourselves, and then Regieleki and Eternatus can kind of clean this game up for us. Yeah, let's just thaw ourselves right now. Because it's kind of annoying that we are... We are frozen. So let's sacred fire our own Eternatus. Let's go for, uh, well, we can't really do anything because we're going to move after our Entai. But I mean, if we thaw, that's great. It'd be the case here where we thaw, us, we thaw out and then we sacred fire ourselves for unnecessary damage. Okay, well, we're thawed, so it's, it's all it's all, all right. Snarls aren't great. We're going to take a water spout and it's probably going to kill Entai but oh it's Origin Pulse that'll kill us I think maybe not well in the rain no rain yeah it takes us down whatever regardless but we got Regieleki to come in the freeze definitely not ideal is it like not in the slightest you know hmm <laughs> but what can you do what can you do you could just deal with it when it comes around so Lecky going to come in. I think we need to kind of protect Regieleki a little bit, you know? I think we go for the sludge bomb into the Entai, protect. Because I think they'd probably protect and snarl in this in this situation. Um, and we'll sludge bomb into the Entai. God, Eternatus has not had a great time in this battle, has it? The status effects have been terrible. Right, well... What are we going to see? Like I say, the Kyogre is going to... Like, the thing is, like, you can just PP stall with, with Eternatus. And I don't think my opponent's got a way to actually take Eternatus down now. Even if they keep snarling us, you know. You could always get a crit, though, couldn't they? Crit, critical hit is always a thing. Let's see. Come on, my dude. Click some buttons. So we protect with Regieleki. Oh, the anti reveal and protect, which is interesting. Uh, and a double protect. Okay, the ogre. Okay, well, we know it's not Salt Vest, so we can probably just double into Entai this next turn. Because um, I think the Kyogre switches out here. And does the Kyogre switch out? It has to switch out, right? Yeah, we Thunderbolt and we Sludge Bomb. And hopefully that is enough to get it. Be interesting to know what items on the the Entai. <sighs> so I'll be full of regret here if the Kyogre stays in and just Origin pulses. But it's it's just it, it's just a knockout bait at this point, right? So my opponent really should switch it out to the Sableye, and then you can get the rain back up. So it makes so much sense to do that. Yeah. Here we go. And if we can get the Entai here, we're minus one after the Snarl with with uh, Eternatus, but we are Magnet boosted. Yeah, it should be in range. Yeah, okay, that's perfect. Now we're now we're in business. Now we're in business. And now the Kyogre can come back in, but uh, we're all right. We're all right because we can Sludge Bomb the Slayer Bly. I think this turn. Oh, do we? Do we? Do we worry? Yeah, I mean, it's just annoying because we know they've got Ally Switch right, so. That makes it a little bit more frustrating to, to have to deal with, I guess. Um, protect because there is a fake out pressure there. Sludge Bomb into the Sableye. And hopefully that's enough to take it down. It's not got a lot of health left. And then we can just T-Bolt. T-Bolt. Well, one T-Bolt be enough for the Kyogre, I'd imagine, from this range. But like I say, like this whole match, you know, we've had all this status on Eternatus. It's kind of a good example to show, like, when your opponent hasn't got that ground-type stab to kind of really, really nuke. 
Got a nuclear on something like a Eternatus. Wow, you fake out into the Eternatus, predicting that switch. That's good. Please don't freeze us again. We, I, I can't cope with another freeze. Can't cope with it. <laughs> can't cope with this. What is this? What is this? We know we're going to see Ally Switch. We could play the game of just Electro Webbing. Um, oh my god. Oh my god. I can't believe this. They're going to. They're going to. They're going to Ally Switch. They're going to Ally Switch. Let's Thunderbolt into the Sableye Eye slot. And even if we don't, we can try and recover. We, we should thaw out at some point, right? Oh, they're cautious. Okay. Well, that's their last move. Yeah. Oh god. What is this? Let's see what an origin pulse does. Yep. Yeah. Okay, well quash coming out. Uh I mean Foul play and origin pulse. And my opponent hasn't missed a single attack yet. So, you know, it's this is brutal. Brutal. What have we done to deserve this RNG today? <laughs> it's not like we've been well I mean Eternatus you know there's always an argument when you play builds like this teams like this you know you're sitting on the field for a lot longer you're taking a lot more attacks so naturally you're going to take a lot more RNG it's going to come into effect you know so that is one of the drawbacks with this sort of with this sort of team um so oh, oh man we need the we need the recover we need to thaw out come on two two freezes in three turns of sleep. I thought this would be like a really short match, but obviously not. Here we go. Come on, let's 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 do this. We kind of need an origin pulse to miss. It'd be, it'd be handy, handy if an origin pulse missed. We need to. We really need to. Uh, oh my god! I think we go down to the next origin pulse. This is going to be a tragic way to end this this uh, episode but sometimes when the game doesn't want you to win you do not win do you so i mean we thought out we get the recover we're back in this there we go that's what we want okay justice <laughs> no miss though origin pulse come on right there we go. Justice. Justice has been almost served up. We need to get rid of this Sableye next, and then that Kyogre is not an issue. The rain stops, so that Origin Pulses are not going to be as powerful or potent. And then we can remove the Sableye. Looks like we're only going to get one this game in today, you know? I mean, at least we've got the Evolution team, right? But it's uh, it's going to be... I don't want to put up a 40-minute video today. Um, now, I like to try and keep the videos around... 30 minutes. Oh, bloody ally switch. Come on. It's the most frustrating game. <laughs> I've never played it's like enough to put you off and be like, right, get the poison. No poison. Scold. I want to get that burn, I think. I'll probably get it. Knowing that they've got every other status condition going, you know. Um let's just let's just go for the sable eye. I want rid of the sable eye. I'm not not your friend today, sable eye. There we go, no ally switch. Get rid of you. Ah, oh, it doesn't even... Ah, oh, but we get the poison. Okay, that's what we need. I knew it wasn't... It's not very effective. It was ghost typing. Kyogre is going to be... Okay, there's the burn. We knew that was going to happen. We knew it. We knew it. Um, we we'll probably want to recover this next turn. Just to uh, to see out this game. Save like gone. No more ally switch. No more shenanigans. And then, yeah, we just recover off and then we can we can go for this. I mean, this is a, it's a good thing and a bad thing. I mean, do you want games where you've got a Pokemon that is, like, near impossible for Pokemon like Kyogre to, to deal with? And in that respect, it's great. But in the other respect, if you're playing the ladder and you're like, every game, every game is not going to be like this. Let's, let's admit that. Like, this game should have been over a long time ago. The multiple RNG hiccups that we've had make this a little bit frustrating three minutes left let's see some uh, protecting coming out i think from my opponent so let's we got plenty of time left we can just recover this off and the battle was cancelled 
finally, finally. Good game to my opponent, I guess. I guess. Anyway, friends, <laughs> that's today's episode. I'm going to jump over now and get us the rental team for today's team, and um, we'll be right back. Friends, here is the rental for today's team. I hope if you do try it out, you have way better RNG than what we had in today's episode, and you have a great time using it. I think Eternatus is an incredible Pokemon. I think it's a lot of fun to use, and I think uh, if you do try it out, you'll enjoy the team. You can see that we didn't really get to feature the Landorus today, but it is your kind of standard set with the Scarf, the Earth Power there, uh, Earthquake and Rock Slide, U-Turn, um, and then the rest of the team's pretty self-explanatory. you got Speed Control there on the Suicune, so you can really disrupt teams between that and the Entai with the Snarl support there. Uh, you've got the Tailwind, Icy Wind as well for just that extra Speed Control support. It comes out against Kyogre. I mean, this team does really well against stuff like the kind of standard Kyogre teams. You've got to be careful against opposing kind of Landorus um, because obviously it will give Eternatus a little bit of a hard time. But the beauty about Eternatus is it's going to outspeed the majority of things in the format. So it's going to normally be able to get that cosmic power off before um, an opponent can attack. So at least you've got that kind of buffer to help you out. you just got to be a little bit wary around things like Taunt. It can give you a few issues, but you do have the fake out support with Thriller Boom that can kind of mitigate that to a certain extent. Anyway, we'll wrap it up there. Like I said, it's been a little bit longer than what I thought it would be today, and I thought we'd get a few more games in, but two freezes of th whatever it was in the end. Who knows? Hope you've enjoyed today's episode. Have a great rest of your day. Take care of yourselves more than anything. I'll catch you all again for another episode very soon. So until then, take care. Bye-bye.